a flame of peace in the presence of a new generation. Another symbolic moment in a process which has spanned the globe. The children of Oslo had come in their thousands to bear witness to an award, which this year is as much about the future as the past. I think it's good for the Irish people. They got peace in uh, Ireland. At almost 100 years old, this is in every sense a traditional parade. After the fun outside the town hall or Rodhus, the atmosphere inside among the invited guests was altogether more in keeping with the occasion. But nonetheless, still relaxed. It was another one of those historic moments. And this time, while the media recorded it for posterity, David Trimble's son was recording it for the family album. They may have been joint winners, but their addresses could hardly have been more different. John Hume seized the moment, giving a textbook acceptance speech. He said the past 30 years had brought many moments of deep depression and outright horror. Endlessly, our people gathered their strength to face another day. And they never stopped encouraging their leaders to find the courage to resolve this situation so that our children could look to the future with a smile of hope. This is indeed their prize, our people's prize. And I am convinced that they understand it in that sense and would take strong encouragement from today's significance. And, of course, today will powerfully strengthen our peace process. He said the challenge now is to grasp and shape history. And the way to do that, he argued, is to implement the Good Friday Agreement. It is now up to political leaders on all sides to move decisively to fulfill the mandate given by the people to safeguard and cherish peace by establishing agreed structures for peace that will forever move, remove the underlying causes of violence and division in our land. There is now in Ireland a passionate sense of moving to a new beginning. Now, there is no such thing as a free lunch. And that being so, we are obliged to sing for our supper. Some expect us to speak as experts and hand out advice on how to make peace. Old hands say that there are two ways to sing for your supper. The, safe and the, the first and the safest course, they say, is to make a series of vague and visionary statements. Indeed, are not vague and visionary statements much the same thing? The tradition from which I come, and by which I am not confined, produced the first vernacular Bible in the language of the common people and contributed much to the scientific language of the Enlightenment. It puts a great price on the precise use of words so much so that our passion for precision is often confused with an indifference to idealism. That is not so. But I am personally and perhaps culturally conditioned to be sceptical of speeches which are full of sound and fury, idealistic intention, but impossible of implementation. And I resist that sort of rhetoric. Instinctively, I identify with the person who said that whenever he heard a politician talk of vision, he advised him to consult an optician. But if you want to hear of a possible Northern Ireland, not a utopia, but a normal and decent society, flawed as human beings are flawed, but fair as human beings are fair, then I hope not to disappoint you.